right, we are back for another episode. I'm very excited because, again, as I just told my next guest, Mr. John Fleck, who has, honey, once you start dipping and doing in people's histories, you wind up finding out all kinds of scandal people have been involved in. And this man, it's very exciting because I think now that I've, I've gotten, you know, done a little bit of the reading about him and having had the few moments before we actually started recording to kind of get a sense of you, I look at you and I think, oh my God, I'm John Fleck, who is here with me today, who, if you check out of his history, you're going to have to give him a moment of being a bit of a pioneer. <laughs> well, I'm that old. Oh dear. Where did you go? Do you see me? I see you. Okay. Are you there? Oh, Excuse yeah. me. Jesus. Oh, there you are again. God, <laughs> zooming, zooming. I'm probably like zooming in so large on you. But yes, it's like you, sir. Okay, Mr. Man, when I was doing my research, I was like, what? Who am I talking to? This is, this is someone who has endured what I, I was talking to my, my uh, partner earlier about how I wanted to talk to you. And I just realized that you were one of the people that in a modern day sense was part, you know, in terms of in my lifetime and in my lifespan was like, you were one of the first original cancel culture people. Like uh, you were high, high end cancel culture, Mr. Man. Can cancel culture in what way? In the fact that your art, when you put your art out and you ended up having this fight with the National Endowment of the Arts to get your money back during that period of Jesse Helms and everything that was going on, what happened to you after the fact? Like it was really hard for you. And then right. I read for all of the other people that were involved with you guys that it was a very tense time. So mm -hmm. like when you look at what's happening right now, like we're mm -hmm. just, we're just going to jump in because we're going to talk about his theater stuff, blah, blah, blah later. But you know, now that I, I've, we started this moment, it's like, how do you view what's going on right now compared to when you were struggling with the censorship issues then? Well, you know, it's funny, just, uh, you know, I was perusing the, the news, you know, a couple times a day, I'll go on, and, and I just saw that they're, uh, that they're starting to ban books again, you know, libraries, schools can't teach these books, and oh, now in Florida, you know, DeSantis, you know, don't say gay, you know, so yeah, hello, what goes around comes around, and we're coming around in a big way, I, it, it feels even more threatening now than it did back then, I mean, I, we were just four artists, you know, who'd applied for funding. And then, you know, um, you know, Jesse Helms got down on us because we were dealing with sexual themes, especially three gay people, you know, and, yeah. and Karen Finley, um, who dealt with sexual themes. And uh, so, you know, and we, we fought the law and, uh, and, and the law won in a way, you know, we won, mm -hmm. they, we went to the Supreme Court um, and uh, we won our first round, but then Bill Clinton, who was president at the time, kind of threw a bone to the uh, conservatives and, uh, and they appealed the case. So, mm -hmm. so basically we won and we lost because basically the uh, National Endowment for the Arts, they said, could deny funding based on morality issues, right. so to speak. And then they canceled, you know, the genre in the National Endowment for the Arts, the, the application, the new media mm -hmm. genre that we were all part of. So, uh, so yeah, they they canceled, uh, you know, these new new media voices, so to speak, right. you know, so, which is a shame. But yeah, in terms of, of today, you know, it's funny, you, you got me thinking, like when you said something about cancel culture, Mm -hmm. And, you know, they love to call the, the left, you know, the right calls the left the cancel culture. But mm -hmm. it, it's like a, a devious ploy because I feel they're the cancel culture. Right. You know, Absolutely. Cancel us. So. Absolutely. So, you know, we are talking with John Fleck and, you know, as as we are doing this is because your approach to your performance art, because you are more a performance artist slash you know theater person but I think you find yourself much freer in the performance artist space at least that's what I gather <laughs> you know well it's a hybrid you know I that you know they people love to label you so I got labeled a performance artist but I've, I've always felt kind of I'm a theatrical performance artist you right. know um, so yeah, um, you know, it's funny speaking of cancel culture, I see, that, you know, it's black history month. And then, uh, <laughs> I, I just, I just read that there were uh, 15 bomb threats against, um, yes. black, black colleges. 
black colleges today or whatever. Crazy, huh? It's crazy. And, it, and you know, what's insane is that nobody seems to be doing anything about it. You know what I mean? It feels as if we're still in this kind of like bubble that nobody wants to own is doing uh -huh. anything. And I, I, for one, as far as an artist is concerned, like I feel like you, you have actually been able to be very brave because you, you fought the law at the time when it really was a crazy sense of conservatism. And now it's kind of, the signals are mixed, but the, the energy is still the same. And this piece that you have now, it's alive. It's alive, because I had to practice. You got to say it twice, but you got to build. Um, well, that's how Dr. Frankenstein said, you know, it's alive, it's alive. That's what my- And, my... and you're, this piece you're doing with the Odyssey Theater yes. Ensemble in out Los Angeles, you know, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> you're dealing with the pandemic and the frustrations of life right. with the pandemic. I mean, you know, we started working on this. Uh, yeah, we were going to do it in August of 2020. Uh, David right. Schweitzer had proposed that we create the special event, you know, during the pandemic, the lockdown. We were going to do outside in a parking lot at the Odyssey Theater. And it was, you know, uh, a celebration of the theater. It's alive. It's alive. Theater is still alive. But, you know, but I'm dealing with, you know, the virus, you know, that mm -hmm. was alive. It's alive. And, and the political situation at the time you know just I don't know it just felt kind of the title felt right to me you know that there was a lot of there there was a monster out there on many fronts brewing you know but uh, hopefully you know people will still go out to the theater and uh, you know hopefully connect to it and feel some connection to life I don't know are people going to the theater in New York? I mean, well, they're they're going, but you know, at the same time, a lot of shows are closing and revamping, and you know, having to halt production for a few days and weeks, and so right. it's still touch and go. It's to me, I think it's still touch and go. And, um, and what about the downtown theater scene? I mean, are they still? You, well, you know, earlier on, there were there were lots of moments where um, a lot of theaters were being called to task for doing nothing <laughs> and just right. saying, well, well, just let them all in, whatever. And then slowly but surely it's caught on because they're recognizing that they're not going to be able to do this without g giving some sort of, of protocol to something. Yeah. So, and, and again, when we're talking about protocols, you have for the Odyssey Theater Ensemble's you're like part of this, it's like I was reading on the website, there's a lot of stuff going on with this theater company for the rest of the year. And you're like kind of in this nice top of the year, give it to them right off the jump thing. Well, I mean, uh, it's been very hard for them to schedule anything, you know, right. it was just been being postponed. Uh, we did a workshop in September. It was mm -hmm. supposed to be in August. It got postponed to September. We did a workshop and then we were supposed to come back in January and then that got postponed. And then we were supposed to open three weeks ago. So we're assuming we're good to go and we will open <laughs> on February 19th. Team. Maybe uh, there will be eight people in the audience. I hope, you know, who knows? I'm, I'm hoping people feel brave. But it seems like, you know, that it's kind of going down in terms of people getting infected and going to the hospital. We'll see. Well, we'll see. I mean, if people, yeah. you know, will do the things to safeguard themselves, it could be a really better situation. So we've got all of that out of the way. Yes. Well. <laughs> so let's talk about It's Alive. It's Alive! Let's talk about that in okay. terms of... Um, your inspiration, of course, is throughout the pandemic, but it's also reflective of the way that you perform. And so this is going to have music. It's going to have choreographed pieces it, as it's well. It's my director calling from New York. Can I just say hi and tell him I'm on the line sure, with you? Sure, tell him, tell him we're talking major biz here. <laughs> hey, so David, I'm, I'm on a Zoom call uh, interview here with Keith Price, who's in New York City in Chelsea. So here you are from New York calling me and I'm oh, Zooming oh, with him right okay. now. All right, I'll just I'll just type this. Okay. This note okay. So right. so say hi to Keith Price, and I'll call you back later. So, hi, Andrew. Hi, David. Okay. It's fun to be in the city with you. <laughs> oh well, hey, we should hang out after I get off the phone with him. Okay, <laughs> coffee, coffee, and Keith. Okay, talk to you soon, David. Perfect. So so let's talk about this piece, though. I mean, this this your performance style in general yeah. is. The, with this particular, it's the music, it's the the combination, the hybrids of everything else that's going on. And I was wondering, are you using original music or do you have song pieces that are going to fit into what you're doing? 
It is a melange of about 40 songs that, uh, uh, that really nothing original. I have adapted and kind of bastardized, but but it's pretty much songs that everybody recognizes. Okay. Uh, but th there's short little snippets, and it's kind of hallucinogenic. And uh, and I and I, I vary between me as Meta John, and I I play this very right wing kind of proud boyish character, and then I play a, a COVID uh, molecule, um, mm -hmm. and I have dancer actors. Um, singers here working with me and we play a COVID course and our mission is to save the, the planet. So me, John's caught between the, like the right, the, 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 the extreme hatred and this kind of the, this other side and I'm trying to make sense of it all. God, does that make any sense? And find out what <laughs> life is all about. What's it all about, Keith? Uh, Come on, John. Well, you know what it's all about? It's all about the idea that you're still being able to express yourself artistically yeah. post this, you know, we're not post anything. It's more like we're inter pandemic. You know what I mean? You know, I have this, uh, it kind of ends like, you know, I, I basically have three minutes left to live, you know, and, and <laughs> how would I want to spend my last three minutes seriously? Right. And, I, and, I, and I make note, would I want to spend it in this little black box theater having to move my own props and just, you know, but you know what? <laughs> It's kind of where I feel most at home. So, right. hey, you know, and uh, that's what makes me feel alive, kind of being on stage, performing for, you know, people and hopefully giving them something to chew on, you know? Wow. So again, you know, John, you are working. This is, this is, it's alive. It's alive. February 19th through March 20th. And you're doing, you're basically the weekend. So it's a Saturday night show at eight o'clock and then Sunday at 5 p.m. Perfect right. for brunchers. Yes, indeed. <laughs> we love a brunch. Oh, you know. Brunch it. and then a show. Oh. <laughs> and, and for me, you know, five o'clock to the show, it's an hour long, six o'clock, we're out of there. Let's go have drinks and eat. I yes. love that. I love that. So there is, but there is a lot that's going on right now. I was, I was checking out your, your story because your show um all for you that you did did that was at the pap just pap theater oh, at the, but at that the was public. after everything had yeah. come down yes you know that was uh that was an interesting experience I was somewhat naive back in the day. I just kind of, every year I did a new show. I never, it was like a happening. I'd create these shows and then, you know, oh, well, hopefully they were well-received. And then I just let them go. I didn't tour them. I just wanted to create new work. So, which was a lot of work. So anyway, I, I go to the public theater with this show I've never done. We have like two weeks to get it up. Actually, David Schweitzer worked with me on it. Uh -huh. And, you know, it was very rough around the edges, you know, I got to say, which a lot of times is charming. But uh, but I remember uh, Ben Brantley uh, from the New York Times. He had a little bit of issue with it. And I go, mm -hmm. oh. And so I kind of felt like, oh, that was, I didn't feel so good about it. But you know what it was? It was like, it was a workshop. It was my New York workshop experience. Right. And I came back to LA and I ended up doing it at the Museum of Contemporary Art the following year. And I worked out all the rough edges and it, I think it was received much better and it was fully realized. So, but I learned, it was a great opportunity to learn that I need to workshop these shows, you know, right. instead of, you know, just going and, whoa, love it or leave it. Um, <laughs> so, so that's why we, when we workshopped the show at the Odyssey, a, a, you know, five months ago. Right. And it really helps, you know, to uh, really figure out what am I trying to say here, you know? Now, did you it doesn't get fully realized until I do it. Then I go, oh, now I know what I should have done or could have done. So like with the with the workshop, how much has the show changed from the the time that you did it back in September, September, yeah, until well, now? Well, I, I realized I had to go a little deeper with this um, Proud Boy character and, and just mm -hmm. make him a little bit more real. You know, it's so easy to go for the, the cliche and the loud, rah, you know, and, but I wanted to, uh, so I, I, I'm digging a little deeper with that. And also, <clears throat> you know, with the whole COVID thing, now that it, you know, five months later from, you know, we've got Omicron, how does that mm -hmm. change the dynamic? Right. And oh yeah, you know, it seems like everything's okay, but we don't know what's mutating out there, you know? So, so I've had to make adjustments there and, uh, 
yeah so and politically because i'm dealing with a lot uh, you know i discussed a lot of the politics you know over the last three years you know mm -hmm. when we had to lock down we didn't get to digest this together right. so you know that's a living thing it's alive you know so um so anyway so i think it's more fully realized and i hope it still pops so there you have it wow all right <laughs> I, you know what, though? I mean, that's the joy, though, I think, of the performing is like even with the workshopping and everything else, it's still the idea that you can pull it together enough to get in front of a, a room full of people or a couple of people and just just get it out. I think this is the best thing. Get it out and, and, and be nimble on your feet when they throw things at you. You can avoid them. <laughs> so, so clearly this is a participatory event. Is that what's going well, on? Well, yes. <laughs> Well, you know, that's how I got started performing in punk clubs, you know, on top yeah. of bars. And people would, if they don't like it, they throw beer bottles at you. So, uh, how I'm funny. Good. It's like, I, you know, I love the fact that that's how your origin story is with that kind of fun stuff. And then at the same time, for folks that have not Googled you yet, <laughs> you know, you have one of the rare distinctions of being someone who has managed to be on every incarnation or at least the modern incarnations of star trek hey, it was like yeah. so like here's the question when you go into um auditions and events and stuff like that do people google you before you show up for auditions like have you ever showed up for an audition and someone goes hey are you that guy that did x y and z kind of thing have you had that moment well, you know, most of the time, especially for TV, uh, you know, they, they, they see your, your, you know, your resume and stuff like that. So, but, um, you know, they're very, <laughs> how soon they forget in Hollywood, you know, like, oh, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I have a recurring role on, uh, um, what is it, um, um, Seth MacFarlane's show, The Orville, you know, uh -huh. so, and once again, I'm under piles of makeup. I, I do play human beings on TV, too, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they do love to put me in makeup and, uh, you know, and they pay me, uh, I, I don't like the money they pay me. Hey, TV money is fabulous. You know? And one good thing about all the makeup, you know, at the end, they got to kind of take, they kind of got to pull it off you. And it's great. It's like great microbrasion. I'm, really an old, <laughs> I'm a very old man here, but I look much younger because. Like, you know, <laughs> That's good. Don't yeah. you love that? Yeah. That's like, it's like walking on the, the sands of the beach. You know what I mean? Like it's a perfect exfoliating thing. Oh yes, every yes, time. Yes. And I get paid for it. I like that. And, you... <laughs> <laughs> and being paid for it also then gives you the freedom to do the stuff that you really like to do. Well, that's, that's what I always say. You know, working in film and TV has you know afforded me the the luxury of creating my own work, which really doesn't pay me any. If I can break <laughs> even doing my own work, I'm happy. You know, right. So, uh, you know, boy, I'm I'm grateful. I truly am. Oh, hey. <laughs> Dangerous here. Well, John, this is so groovy. It's like again. So, for those of you out in the Los Angeles area who want to get your hands and you know get your hands and feet wet with some theater, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. February 19th through March 20th, you can see John Fleck and It's Alive. It's Alive at uh, the Odyssey Theater Ensemble. On the weekend, Saturday at 8 o'clock, Sunday, 5 p.m. Get your margaritas on pre-show and then get your dinner on after. How? And yeah. at the same time, you know, also take a moment. And I mean, like, and I, I say this seriously, too, and it seems it's going to seem so weird. But, like, being able to appreciate you as an artist is great because what you had to endure, even, you know, you don't talk about it. You don't spend a lot of energy on it. But the sacrifices that you had to make to do that is something that even in whatever world that I've been walking through, I'm a benefit of that. And so, you know, again, standing on extra sh other people's shoulders. And that's something that even in the middle of Black History Month, you know, that's going to be heard a lot, but also too, as an artist and also as, as a member of the LGBTQP, well, you know, that thing, being a member of that, that's also something to be very thankful and grateful to have this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Keith. Uh, you said it so well. <laughs> LGBTQPTWXYLBW. <laughs> Again, you know, we're from that generation where we were just lucky with gay and or queer. Yeah, you know? I know. It we, was I would so take queer. Cool. But, you know, the kids today. 
Everybody's uh, got to be special. <laughs> kids, what's the matter with kids? I'm buying three kids today. <laughs> I love it, John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will be back. How was that?